In the previous video, we showcased the design of the 3D printed microscope mount for a NeoPixel clone and talked about a few gotchas along the way. If you haven't seen it yet and are interested, click the annotation here. It is now time to wrap up this project by designing and fabricating the PCB and its enclosure and getting the prototype software to work on an ATtiny85. The schematic for the control circuitry is fairly straightforward and was designed using KiCad, a free and open source EDA with fairly powerful features. It consists of the ATtiny itself, two potentiometers, a tactile switch with pull down resistor, and a pull up resistor for the reset pin. Drilling PCBs can sometimes be cumbersome, so I decided to make the board layout SMD friendly. For the fabrication of the prototype PCB, the toner transfer method was used, where the design is printed on glossy printing paper using a laser printer and is then transferred to a simple copper board using a common household electric iron. The heat from the iron remelts the toner particles and they adhere to the copper board acting as an edge resist. After ironing, some cleanup work has to be done to ensure that all of the remaining fibers from the glossy paper are removed from the PCB. It is also critical to ensure that the layout is mirrored before printing, as it gets flipped by applying it to the copper board. Failing to do so is a common mistake, and uh, it also happened here. The board was etched using ferric chloride, but we recommend either getting the board fabricated or using another etchant, as ferric chloride can get pretty messy and the stains are nigh impossible to remove. Using simple nail polish remover is a very effective method of getting the toner of the copper, thus revealing the shiny traces. As the board doesn't have a solder mask, Captain tape is used to cover up traces that are in danger of being shorted by other components. After populating the board, it's time to design the case. Fusion 360 is again the tool of choice, and after one or two iterations the final product is composed of a main piece that holds the PCB, with cutouts for the potentiometers, mini USB jack and tactile switch, and a top cover printed in black PET G that features the cutout for the ring light connector. As PET G has the tendency to produce very fine hairs when printing, a small propane torch is used to simply burn these away. The PCB is slid into the main part and the tabs of the cover are inserted in their respecting slots. The cover is then closed to be secured with two M3 screws. After that, the whole assembly is secured by tightening the nuts of the potentiometers. The ATtiny85 is programmed with a USB ASP clone, which was updated using an Atmel ICE debugger to get rid of a nagging warning from the Arduino IDE. The finished control unit is mounted to the microscope support using two holes and two M3 screws. Threads for the screws have been cut into the 3D printed part beforehand using machine taps. Next, the ring light assembly is screwed onto the microscope using the lens cap thread. After that, it's only a matter of connecting the NeoPixel clone to the control unit, plugging in a mini USB lead, and connecting it to either a standard USB charger or in this case a power bank. The left potentiometer controls the brightness of the ring light, the tactile switch changes the modes to adjustable light source and the right potentiometer controls the position of the light source. Future modes that feature color changes are on the to-do list but the degree of functionality, for now, is sufficient as it is. And that about wraps it up for this video. See you next Friday!